Glad you made it back, everybody. The Chris Alcedo Show here on Newsmax. New York Attorney General Letitia James has ended her run for New York governor and is shifting her re-election uh, to, uh, to Attorney General. Meanwhile, she continues seeking to depose former President Trump in a civil fraud probe taking place next month. Here with me now is former Virginia Governor Bob McDonnell. Also with us tonight, New York Attorney General candidate Michael Henry. Thank you uh, both for being here. Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah to you both. I'm Michael. This was a, a surprise you. announcement from AG James. How does this affect uh, her, uh, your campaign, rather? Well, it, initially when I got into this race, she was the attorney general. Uh, she's shown that she's about as good a gubernatorial candidate as she is an attorney general. At this point, it's not going to, uh, it'll change the messaging at some point. Obviously, having an open seat makes it a little easier. But I think if we use her record against her, and a lot of what she's done basically, you know, being a political activist uh, and an attorney grandstander instead of an attorney general, we'll be able to get that message across the state. Well, I think you have a pretty good shot at also pointing out this is how socialists achieve political power in New York. The attorney general takes out their, their governor so they can, they can <laughs> rise up. Governor McDonald, uh, according to uh, the World Health Organization and U.S. scientists, the Omicron China virus variant, we call it the Xi variant, no worse than any of the other variants out there. Actually, it's being classified as mild. However, blue state leaders continue to double down on China virus mandates and restriction using the G virus as an excuse. Isn't this going to deepen the divide between the blue and the red states and fuel this, this continued blue state exodus that we're already seeing? I think so. I mean, they've said they want to follow the science, which we all agree we should. So what the science says, Chris, is what you just pointed out. Uh, one, while it's mutated uh, maybe more than, uh, than Delta, which is the predominant uh, strain now, that, uh, and it may be easier to catch, it's not uh, as deadly. In fact, there have been no deaths reported, uh, and uh, people don't get as sick. And the vi vaccines that are already on the market are equally affected against Omicron as they are against Delta and the other, other virus. So to say that this is another excuse for lockdown or trampling on freedoms, or other political uh, solutions so that the uh, executives can look like they're in charge is flat out the wrong uh, policy. And you're exactly right. You see people going to Texas, Florida, other Tennessee, other Virginia now, other liberty loving states. I think it continues if they don't follow the science. Yep. Uh, Michael, uh, we got to bring this up because it's been in the news the last couple of days. Christmas tree mm -hmm. smack dab in the middle of New York was set on fire. And the guy that set the fire was released without bail. He caused 500 grand in damages, yet he walks free. Now, am I out of line calling the Democrats the party of the criminal? Am I out of line saying that? No, not at all, because they're pushing pro-criminal policies. They're putting criminals' rights over victims' rights. And in this instance, it's a really dangerous situation because not only do a lot of people work in that area, that's a, heavily, uh, tour that's a heavy tourist area. And you also have first responders that have to, to go out there and try to put out that fire. And to let him out for arson with no bail is, is just showing more and more to criminals that there's no consequences to their actions. And that's why they're doing brazen things like burning down Christmas trees on the middle of 6th Avenue. Yeah, yeah, burning down Christmas trees, ripping off stores, smash and grab everywhere. I mean, I, I don't want to pick right. on New York. It's just as bad out in the People's Republic of California. Uh, Governor McDonald, <laughs> earlier this week, Chicago Mayor Lori Lightfoot blamed businesses for the rampant crime in her city. She said they should be hiring security officers because they're already paying exorbitant taxes to pay for police that are being, you know, disemboweled by, <laughs> by politically speaking, by their administrations. Do, uh, and, and she also says that businesses ought to be locking up their goods. Is victim blaming actually going to make any city around this country safer? Chris, just when you think uh, the public policies of some of the big city mayors can't get any more ludicrous, we have a statement like this of blaming uh, victims. So with all the increase in murders, 60% up year over year in Chicago, are we going to blame all those murder victims because they didn't carry guns and arm themselves for self-defense? I mean. Come on, uh, this is just terrible leadership by, by Lori Lightfoot. Uh, call out the criminals, reckless, uh, irresponsible behavior that breaks the rule of law where people get, uh, get damaged to their goods or their life or their liberties need to be punished. I was attorney general, I wish Michael the best in what he's doing. We all know that, that people who f uh, offend society need to be held accountable, not the victim. It's, it's just craziness, Chris. 
Well, most of America knows that, but there, sadly, there are people we call socialist Democrats who seem to have no clue that they, they can build a governing majority out of criminals. Uh, former Governor Bob McDonnell and Michael Henry. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Appreciate your time on the Salcedo Show here on Newsmax.